guys, what's up and welcome back to my YouTube channel. So today we're finally tackling into the topic of art education and specifically art university. So currently I'm an art university student, I'm doing my bachelor's degree in uh, graphic design in Fine Arts University in Gdańsk, Poland. I'm about to graduate in three months so I think I already have enough of experience to uh, share it with you guys and to tell you about the pros and cons of uh, art university and hopefully I will be able to help you out making up your mind whether uh, art university is something for you or if it's something that you should rather skip. Alright, let's get into it then. So like I already mentioned, the course that I'm doing is a bachelor's degree in graphic design and it lasts for three years. After those three years you're graduating with a bachelor's degree certificate but you can also stay in the same exact university for another two years and continue on with your master's. So the good thing about splitting the course in two parts kind of is that you can always, uh, after finishing the three years, you can always switch your degree to something else and then continue your master's in a different field of art or in something completely different or you can stay in the exact same path and continue on uh, your program uh, with doing the masters. Also since I'm Polish and I'm studying in a Polish public university I don't pay any tuition fee but as far as I'm concerned if you're an international student or if you come uh, from any other European countries you will most likely be required to pay some tuition fee but here I'm not 100% sure on that so if you want to come to Poland and study here then please do your research more efficiently than I did. <laughs> I also got a lot of questions so whether there are any entrance exams and how does it all work. So uh, yes we do have entrance exams for the graphic design course and Fun fact here, I was actually uh, trying to get into the course that I'm doing right now three times and the first two times I didn't get in, but well like they say third time is a charm and it also worked out for me uh, the third time and I finally got in. Uh, so yeah, I do have a lot of experience when it comes to entrance exams so I can tell you a little bit more about that. So well, the entrance exams are mostly focused on the practical tasks, drawing, painting and some conceptual thinking. So the exams are divided into four parts, let's say. The first three parts are the practical parts, so it's a still life drawing, it's painting and it's also some conceptual tasks, like I said, where you are requested to design a poster uh, depicting some certain idea or some slogan. So it's um, uh, these are pretty interesting tasks, but they are also quite demanding. So you probably want to prepare uh, some time beforehand so you're ready to take on those challenges and to uh, do your best on the entrance exams. And after you pass the first part of the exams, you're going to be asked to showcase your portfolio and talk to the committee. They're going to probably ask you to tell them something about your works, about your inspirations, and they're going to basically do a mini interview with you uh, for maximum 10 to 15 minutes. And then after that, you're going to be also judged uh, based off of your works and based off of the previous part, the practical part of the exam, and uh, you're going to be assigned some certain score. And after summing all of that up, uh, you're gonna find out whether you got in or whether you didn't and and this whole procedure from what i remember takes around one week and after that you will be um you will know whether you got in or whether you didn't so uh it's pretty stressful time because there is a lot to do uh the tasks are demanding and it's all very packed uh, in a very hectic schedule but it's only a week so it's um, easy to survive and after that you will still have holiday and you can anticipate the start of the course. So uh, yeah, the answer to this question is we do have entrance exams and they are quite intense I would say. The next questions that I got were about the types of classes we're having, the kind of subjects we're learning and whether these are more practical classes or if there is uh, more 
um, studying of textbooks and just basically learning some facts about, I don't know, graphic design, drawing and those kind of things. So well, obviously it all depends on the course, so I can only speak from a perspective of graphic design. Uh, so our classes are more focused on practical work since we're mostly having to uh, submit some kind of uh, project, some kind of uh, drawings as well. And uh, our, um, our program is basically based on practical skills. And the variety of the subjects that we have during our three years of education is actually uh, pretty solid because we do have, for example, live drawing classes, we do have uh, artistic graphics, we have just basic graphic design, the basics of it, then we have a more advanced graphic design, we do have classes like typography, photography, um, art history, which is the one uh, class that we actually need to memorize a lot of things and study a lot of things. And we also do have some less intense subjects among all of that. So uh, yeah, the spectrum is pretty big, but the core of the course is obviously graphic design. So we do have the most of such classes in our schedule. But I would say that the ratio between the practical classes where we actually are asked to submit some projects that we need to design uh, compared to the classes that we actually need to study something and learn something from textbooks is like 90% to 10% or even 95 to 5%. So it's, um, yeah, the, the difference is pretty big and uh, I think it's pretty fair like that. Uh, now I'm gonna take my phone because I actually saved a couple of your guys' questions from Instagram that I thought that uh, were really interesting and I wanted to answer them. So one of those questions was about the environment and does it feel competitive? And honestly, for me, I never perceived uh, my university environment as competitive. I was never a person that wanted to get the best grades. So for me, it was never about competition. I never wanted to be better with someone. I just wanted to be proud of my projects. I wanted to be happy with the work that I'm submitting. Uh, so for me, not really. It was never competitive. But I know that some people tend to feel a little bit competitive, but it's rather about them trying to be the best uh, that they can be in a certain area and a certain subject, but it doesn't really affect others. So I would say in our university, I don't feel any sort of competition. It's really chill. And the next question that is actually a very interesting one, but at the same time, very tricky to answer is, does university support your individual YouTube and Instagram work? Um, and honestly, uh, this is a very difficult one to answer because um, I'm not a person that shows off my personal uh, Instagram and what I'm doing on YouTube. And, and I'm definitely not a person that is bragging about my career and what I'm doing. Uh, so at first, not a lot of people knew what I was actually doing uh, besides university. But of course, as time went by, people started finding out and you know, sometimes when you're doing some certain assignments, you need to bring this up or refer to your personal style or to your personal work as a part of the conversation or as a part of the assignment. So it's actually quite unavoidable to uh, not mention what you're doing as your job if you have a side job, let's say, besides the university. So uh, yeah, now after two and a half years in my university, people do know what I'm doing. The teachers mostly know what I'm doing, but uh, I prefer to not mention it just because of the fact that I'm not saying that everyone, but people tend to look at you differently and people tend to look at you through uh, what you're doing kind of. So uh, especially when it's uh, in the exact same field, your work is in the exact same field as your studies, then it might cause some troubles and it might cause some misinterpretation of um, and some judgment, first of all of the fact that uh, 
you can't do anything else except of uh, what you're showcasing online and uh, all of the assignments that you're gonna be doing you will probably be trying to resolve in this very specific style uh, if you guys get what I'm saying so uh, yeah I, I, sometimes I got some um, weird comments uh, referring to what I'm doing but uh, I never took it very personal because I know that uh, it's just how it is. I, I was never really offended by anything because I, I really got used to it. Um, I've been doing this, uh, I've been doing YouTube and Instagram for already a while. I've also been into an art high school where I was already doing YouTube and Instagram. So I just got used to some minor comments and it never really bothered me. But referring to the actual point of the question, is my university supportive of my art career? I would say it's rather neutral, no one is really uh, praising me for what I'm doing and I'm definitely not expecting that. I like it the way it is, uh, people know what I'm doing but no one really is doing anything special about it and I really like it that way. So, so yeah, I really hope that uh, is a sufficient answer to your question. Okay, and there is another very intriguing question that I really wanted to bring up here in this little Q&A. So someone asked that some YouTubers say that it's easier and it's better to learn drawing on your own, drawing and painting, than actually attending a university. And here I can actually agree that if you want to go to art university just strictly to learn how to draw, then it's kind of pointless because looking at my example and how our school works, we only have like three hours of uh, live drawing class per week, which to improve your drawing skills is definitely not enough. You should be drawing at least, um, you know, a couple of times a week and um, in a perfect world every day to improve and to uh, better your drawing skills. Um, so yeah, in, in this manner, art university will not be sufficient for you to uh, improve in drawing or in painting. You still need to be doing all of that work on your own. But uh, art university provides you with uh, a lot of uh, different benefits and more uh, uh, things and it adds more things to the equation let's say because in my opinion um, art university is not actually about uh, just straight off learning because you need to do a lot of learning on your own and no one is kind of guiding you through this people will just give you some certain tips and tricks of course you can learn a lot from your teachers and your professors but most of the work you kind of need to do on your own regardless so um, so if you're only looking for improving your drawing skills, then maybe going to art university is not necessary for you. But if you want to uh, broaden your skills and uh, get to know some different art disciplines and just get some experience, get different points of views into your uh, artistic uh, knowledge, then yeah, art university is a good choice, I would say. And I also got another very intriguing question uh, about how am I juggling having classes and making time for social media. Since I was working in social media already back in high school, I managed to uh, come up with some habits and some time organization plans to help me out to use my time sufficiently and uh, you know balance it between the schoolwork and the work that I need to do for YouTube and for Instagram. And here a very important thing to note is uh, what I'm doing as my job, drawing, uh, recording videos, is what I love. It's my passion. I never feel forced to do it. So that kind of never felt like a duty. So for me, uh, my schoolwork was rather uh, much more of like a chore, a duty for me. And then my uh, actual work, my social media, running my social media, doing drawings, that felt like a hobby to me. That felt like um, I was doing something in my free time and uh, the, I was just, you know, enjoying it. So uh, that made it much easier for me to uh, balance my time between those two things. And I've never actually had any problems with trying to find time for uh, both my uh, 
school, uh, school duties and uh, my social media duties as well. But yeah, here I'm not gonna lie, sometimes I needed to make some sacrifices for the sake of mostly uh, my social media career because sometimes I, you know, skipped on doing some homework, sometimes I just didn't feel like, you know, studying enough for uh, some certain uh, exams, which you guys shouldn't do that, stay in school and learn as much as you can. But yeah, I mean, it is what it is, I've never failed any class, I always passed everything at the first term. My grades are still um, pretty, pretty decent and actually I would say even uh, surprisingly good. So, uh, so far so good, I've managed to uh, have a really good balance between my school and my work and it's been going really good. So yeah, I think that we're gonna be wrapping up with this question and I really hope that my sort of perspective and sharing my sort of experience with my art university uh, helped you guys uh, with making up your mind whether you want to attend art university or if it's something that uh, you don't really feel like it's uh, suited for you. Let me know in the comments. Also, uh, there were a lot of questions that I didn't include in uh, my today's Q&A because this video would have been like uh, one hour long, but I would be more than willing to do a second part of such videos. So let me know if you would be interested in that. And yeah, I'll be wrapping up. So thank you guys so, so much for watching and take care. Bye.